thanks for tuning in it'll help me a lot if you hit that subscribe button uh, leave a like and comment below so after this walk i'll have finished my first virtual trail race which was the great virtual race across tennessee so at the beginning of the year i noticed these new virtual races popping up uh, they were all over the place every time you looked online you saw a new virtual race i thought what's that all about virtual racing that's not the same as really racing so i didn't really think that was for me so i pretty much ignored them for the next next few months so by the end of april i noticed a different trail race a uh, virtual race it was a thousand kilometer uh, virtual race it was called the great virtual race across tennessee and i thought well, that sounds a bit more interesting i mentioned it to my son jake he said he would uh, get me my entry for my birthday so on the first of may i started my virtual journey across tennessee so the rules for the race were run or walk a thousand kilometers um, between the first of may and the 31st of august so you could do your activities uh, runs or walks wherever you want so do them local to you uh, go for a wander uh, do them wherever you want you don't have to go to tennessee <laughs> this is virtual you just have to remember to log your miles on the um on the website every day so it was actually just over a thousand kilometers so i deal in miles i don't really do my runs in in kilometers um so the actual distance was going to be 635 miles so i didn't really know what to expect from this experience uh, been my first virtual race so i started off at a fairly relaxed pace then i noticed you could track the the progress of other runners uh, within the race there was I think it was about 18 and 19,000 people signed up for this race. And when I found out you could track other people, my, my brain started thinking, who else do I know who's actually running in this race? So then I found a few people I actually know that were in the race. And I also found some people that were fairly local to me as well. So pretty much that was the end of my relaxed approach a week or so in. Uh, I think it was about 10 days, and then I thought, right, I know these folk, I've got to beat them. <laughs> so running in May, running was going really well. I was loving it. I was on furlough, so I didn't have to work. Had loads of time. The weather was just wall-to-wall -wall sunshine the entire month. So I was able to get out uh, and do some really nice runs. It was great. So as May went on, different formats to this race emerged on the website. So originally it was, well it, it was, it was always uh, the great virtual race across Tennessee, 635 miles. But then certain folks seemed to be finishing in a matter of, there's a guy called the Gingerbread Man, and I think he finished the whole race in about 12 days, which was insane. So they thought of uh, different different ways to extend the race. So they made a, a thousand mile version and they made an out and back version as well. So since then my running was going well and I was getting a good few miles in, uh, I kept changing my mind. So there's a helicopter over the top, I don't know how noisy this is. Uh, but pretty much I uh, changed my mind in May. Here we go, I don't know if you can see. Probably not. <laughs> But I changed my mind and thought, oh, I can easily do a thousand miles, so I'm going to do the thousand miles. And then by the end of May, I was actually above the target for a thousand miles. So I thought, I know, I'll do the out and back. So double the distance. Because uh, I was somewhere in between the thousand mile and the double the distance um, mileage at that point. <coughs> Realistically, um, if I was going to be doing the out and back from the start i should have started at a slightly brisker pace so i was on course but you know what it's like you just get goal creep don't you change your mind 
So my May stats were and ran uh, 274.6 miles. I'd done, hold on, I've got this on my phone because I'm never going to remember this figure. 24,715 feet of elevation. I'd ran for 55 hours and 11 minutes and had done 41 different activities. So it was, I don't know, 90 odd percent running with a wee bit of walking thrown in. So that was May. Brilliant. So June, June continued to go well up until the 5th of June. The 5th of June I was out for a run and strained my calf muscle. Didn't really think a lot of it. Um, got back, not really had much issues in the way of calf issues in the past. Uh, thought, didn't think much of it. So next couple of days, I think I went for a couple of walks just to ease it off. Uh, but that calf strain ended up changing the entire, entire journey across Tennessee, really. So my race was definitely going to go a bit pear-shaped. So as I say, uh, the next few days I uh, did some walks, hoping that would ease the, the issue with the calf. It didn't. So then I decided, um, well at that point I was just doing lots of rice methods, so rest, ice, compress and elevate. Uh, it was still not right, so I decided to take the, the following week off, the total week. No running, no walking at all. I just wanted to get this fixed up uh, nice and quick so I could get back out and get the miles in. Uh, it didn't work. So after, after having a week off, uh, I thought, I know, I'll go for a nice, uh, easy, slow paced four mile run uh, just to see how it feels. That was a big mistake. So on the run, it was still stiff. Uh, it was still sore, but I thought, I just, 24 miles, I'll just try and run it off. It'll probably ease off by the time I finished. Uh, by the time I finished, as soon as I stopped, oh, it was stiff the whole way, whole way along. And then by the time I stopped, it was sore. It was much sore. And by the time I got home, uh, drove home, got back, I was in agony. I could hardly actually walk. It was really difficult putting any weight on it at all. So I went back to the rice method. So more rest, ice, compress and elevation. Uh, stopped running, walking again. Uh, didn't want to do anything. Spoke to a therapist to know, and she said it just needed time. Needed much more time than a week. So I kind of resigned to myself. Okay, this is probably the rest of June out, which was pretty annoying. So that was it for June. I had to take the rest of the month off. So the June stats were, let's have a read of this, 81 miles, 5,001, no, 5,518 feet of elevation, uh, 20 hours and 33 minutes of being out, and I did 11 activities. So considerably less than the previous month. At this point, I thought, I didn't know whether or not I'd be able to continue with the race. I just thought, I need to get this sorted. So I thought, okay, I've taken the rest of the month off. That's two and a half weeks. Uh, let's see what July brings. So I took the first week of July off as well, because my um, injury still wasn't right. And I thought to myself, well, the, the double's definitely out there. I'd already thought that to myself. The double's gone, the thousand miles probably gone. Uh, surely to goodness the actual original race plan, 635 miles. Surely you can still get that done. It's only still early-ish into Ju July. So yeah, surely. So the following week, we're into the second week of July now. I was really wanting to get, get back out, get some miles in, start logging some distance. Um, so I started incorporating well, I, I, originally, um, second week, I just did walks. But then within the walks, as the walks went on, I'd run a bit. I'd run like a 50 meters, see how it felt, felt okay. Uh, run 100 meters. And then as the walks went on, I'd just do a little bit more running within the walks. 
but not much at all because I could still feel it off. I did though uh, do some elevation. I went out and helped a friend uh, in, uh, do, do some big hills and thinking about it, going up those hills, I probably did too much strain on the calf. I just thought, I'm gonna get some miles in, gonna get some elevation in. I'm not running. Surely that'll be okay. That's not gonna hurt it or aggravate it, but I'm pretty sure the, the strain on going up and coming down did aggravate it. So July was very much a month of um, do some walks, um, bring in a little bit of running into it. Um, I think it was getting better, but each time I do a little bit of running, it, just a small amount, it not flare up so much, but it wasn't as bad as it was originally, but it would get worse. And I just think, oh, I can't do the flaming running. I'm just gonna have to do some walking, then I'm gonna have to take some days off. It's pretty frustrating. So by the end of July, I was really beginning to doubt whether or not I'd finish the, the race at all. So July stats were 106.6 miles, 19,524 feet of elevation, 37 hours and 29 minutes on my feet, and 20 activities. So there was much less distance and activities but time on my feet and elevation was still fairly high because I'd been doing some hill walking. So the first week of August, um, I started the first few days with the same kind of plan I had in July. I was doing mostly walks with a little bit of running, but it was still playing up. And I thought, if I continue to do this, I'm gonna get another 100 mile month in at best. If that, probably not even that because it's just going to get worse again. So I gave myself a new target. My new target was walk to the finish. It wasn't exactly what I had planned originally, but you have to adapt, don't you? So the new target of walking, walking the rest of the race, I had 172.8 miles left to walk, which was quite a lot uh, with this calf, but I thought with walking and not running, that should be okay. I should be able to make that. So with the 172 miles left in August, uh, that ended up proving to be way more than my calf was happy doing. Um, so even with no running at all and just doing the walking, um, my calf's been getting worse and worse. So this past week has been pretty difficult. So it's just been getting sore and sore. Um, but I know, I knew um, I was nearly there. So getting up in the mornings, walking down the stairs, oh, going up the stairs, really sore come off. But I was convinced, um, let's just get to the end. I can just walk to the, to the finish. So this is my last walk where I am gonna get this, this thing done. <laughs> God, it's gonna be good. So basically just been doing too many miles to let my calf heal. Too much time on my feet. So when this is, is finished, very shortly, um, next goal is just get it sorted. So I'm convinced it'll fix itself fairly quickly once I stop going out and doing loads of miles every day. So hopefully the next few weeks I'll be back out running uh, because the next few weeks I'm just going to be Still going out most days, but I'll just be doing uh, a couple of miles a day or something, just to give it some exercise. But I'm gonna take the whole weight and strain off it by reducing the mileage. So as I say, this is me finishing up. 635 miles done. It will have been pretty evenly split between 50-50 running and walking. Running the first half and walk in the second half. So the August stats, end of play August stats uh, were 173.8 miles, uh, 14,013 feet of elevation, time was 50 hours and 35 minutes, uh, or it will be, 
and activities activities were 33. So that's the t-shirt. The t-shirt uh, is on. Uh, it's, it's been virtually finished. And I'll be getting my buckle shortly. Don't know how long it'll take to come. But question time for you. Have you done a virtual race? Have you ever done a virtual race before this year? Uh, I'd never even heard of virtual races before this year. But be interesting to know. Have you taken these virtual races on board? Have you ran one? How did you find it? And would you do another one? Thanks for watching and see you next week.